Okay, the next speaker is setting up. So this paper is Programmable Light Curtains. Uh, it's the CMU team, and the speaker is Joe Bartels from CMU. For the introduction. Uh, today, I'll be presenting our research on a new type of depth imaging sensor called a Programmable Triangulation Light Curtain. So just by a show of hands, uh, how many of you have heard of the term light curtain? A few of you. I must have been at the demo session this morning. Um, so, but I guarantee that even though most of you have never heard of this term, uh, you've all experienced it. For example, you go into an elevator and you put your hand in the way of the door while it's closing, and it stops. This is a light curtain. You have a light source on one side and a light sensor on the other, and when the light path gets blocked, it tells the elevator there is something in the way, and the elevator opens again. Now, this kind of light curtain is all around us, including in elevators and garage doors, but what you may probably not even know is that there are hundreds of light curtains designed specifically to keep people safe from heavy machinery in factories. Here are just a few examples. Uh, in all of these cases, each curtain is customized to a particular application in the factory, and it's highly inflexible. Now, light curtains don't have to be actual curtains. Uh, they could just be a set of laser beams. Uh, so this is a common scene in movies where a villain tries to steal treasure by navigating through a room full of lasers. Uh, this is essentially a bunch of fixed laser beams acting together as an object detector for this entire volume. So, in all of these cases, you can think of light curtains as object detectors. The problem with these types of light curtains is that they are each designed for a particular environment, a specific application, and they cannot easily be reused or reprogrammed for another application or environment without manual re repositioning and aligning of each sensor and source. Now, if we were able to reprogram these things and make them more flexible, then we could actually use them for computer vision. Imagine now, conceptually, that you can place a light curtain along a surface anywhere you want, and you can detect objects there. What could you do? For example, these programmable light curtains could be used for autonomous systems like cars and robots. Robots could use them to check planned paths in real time or for robot safeguarding. Cars could use them to detect vehicles in adjacent lanes or keep a safety zone around the vehicle. But how do we do this? How can we make these types of light curtains? In all of the light curtains that I've shown, the light source is on one side and the sensor is on the other. Now, it's very difficult to use these types of curtains for the types of obstacle detection we're talking about. But instead, uh, if we move these two things so that they are side by side, this is something that we all know. This is just triangulation. So instead of placing the sensor and source on either side and looking for things that are blocking them, you place them side by side and intersect them along a line known by triangulation. Now, if there's nothing at this intersection, the camera doesn't receive any light. But if there's an object along this line, the light is reflected back to the camera and it sees the obstacle. And this is it. This is the entire idea in this paper. Now, you can move this line around and you can create any ruled surface that you want. Here, we are moving the line to create a plane, just like a normal light curtain. The output of the system is a binary mapping of where objects were detected in the scene. Now, we are restricted to just planes. By changing the relative angle between the two planes, you can create other surfaces. Like here, our surface is a cylinder. You can see the circular path by watching the intersection of the planes where they meet at the floor. Here, you can see the circle that was traced by that curtain. Now, compare this to a full-blown 3D sensor that is used today, like a LiDAR. A LiDAR is capturing the entire volume. But if you think about the scenes that we're interested in, they are mostly filled with empty space. It has a bunch of surfaces, but mostly it's empty. So really, we can make an efficient 3D object detection system that is only looking for surfaces. This is in contrast to a LiDAR, which eventually captures an entire volume and then also has to heavily process it for obstacle detection. So how do you make a system that can do this? Here I'll show you the optical schematic of our system. The illumination side is composed of a laser, a collimation lens, a, line, a lens to fan the laser into a line, and a galvomere to direct the laser line. The imaging side contains a line camera, a small lens, and another galvomere to direct the viewing angle. 
the illumination side is emitting a plane of light, and the imaging side is capturing a plane of light with a line sensor. By moving the Galvo mirrors, the planes of illumination and imaging can be pointed to intersect at different positions. This is our hardware prototype. It consists of the illumination system, the imaging system, the power and control circuitry, and a helper camera that is used for calibration and visualization only. Here are the three parts of the illumination system. You have the laser, the PAL line lens, and the Galvo mirror. For the imaging system, the line camera, the S-mount lens, and another Galvo mirror here. So we could use a 2D camera sensor here without the Galvo mirror and image row by row. Uh, but the largest benefit of using a 1D sensor over a 2D sensor is that Galvo control over a 1D sensor is quicker and more flexible than going row by row on a 2D sensor. A 1D camera steered with the Galvo enables you to slow the scan down or speed it up however you want. You can scan in different directions. You can vary the sampling rate. You can adaptively sample the scene. Uh, these things are much more difficult to do with a 2D camera. So the baseline of this device is 15 centimeters. Uh, currently, this prototype creates light curtains with a resolution of 200 lines per curtain and captures each line with a 100 microsecond exposure. At this resolution, the maximum rate of the device is five curtains per second. This rate could be increased by decreasing the resolution of the curtain, um, but really, if the prototype was engineered for performance, it could reach video frame rates. Uh, now I'll show some of the curtains this device can generate. Here, the device was configured to image a cosine-shaped light curtain. The right video shows images captured by the line camera. The middle video is from the 2D helper camera's view with the light curtain rendered in blue and the detections rendered in green. You can see that as the tubes are rearranged, the person is detected when he crosses the curtain. This is an arc curtain. As the light curtain device moves in the scene, the arc detects all of the objects that it encounters. This is a curtain for vehicle lane monitoring. It is useful for detecting objects that come into the vehicle's path from the sides and the front. This is a vertical curtain. Uh, it can detect vehicles as they back out of parking spaces. Our approach can suppress strong ambient light and work outdoors, too. Here is a curtain that is detecting people crossing the road from a sidewalk on a sunny day. Even though we use a low power source, the device can still image out to 25 meters in bright sunlight. This curtain detects objects by rapidly sampling a volume with discrete set of lines. Here, this curtain sparsely samples the volume to detect people in the entire cross rock rather than just a single plane. So this is a video of the light curtain imaging through smoke. Notice that our device can see the road sign even when the smoke is very dense and the sign is invisible in the regular camera. Since the light curtain only receives light from the intersection of the camera and the line sensor, it effectively blocks almost all other light in the volume, which significantly reduces scattered light. The device will still res receive a small amount of multi-scattered light, but it will be much smaller than normal imaging systems. One limitation of this device is curtain thickness. Uh, since each camera pixel has a finite size and the laser has a given thickness, our light curtain has a certain thickness by triangulation uncertainty. From theoretical analysis, we know that triangulation uncertainty is proportional to the depth squared. Uh, so suppose we set a planar curtain at about four meters away. It will have a certain amount of thickness. Uh, so for this stair scene, instead of one single stair being detected, three stairs are detected. Well, this is OK sometimes, uh, but sometimes we want finer resolution to avoid uh, missed detections or to avoid uh, false detections. We can make the curtain thinner uh, by replacing the line intensity camera with a continuous wave time of flight camera. Unlike triangulation uncertainty, continuous wave time of flight uncertainty is constant and it is inversely proportional to its modulation frequency. So by using a continuous wave time of flight sensor with a high modulation frequency, we can reduce the uncertainty significantly. By combining triangulation and time of flight, we can always have a small uncertainty. Let's look at that stair scene again. Uh, before, with triangulation only, three stairs were detected. But now, when combined with phase data, only one stair is detected. This device can also create depth maps. Here, a depth map is obtained by sweeping planar light curtains through the volume. Images from each depth are fused together to create the depth map. 
Here we used 40 discrete planes, but you could increase the depth resolution by sweeping through more planes. And so here's a depth map of an indoor scene. Uh, with constant exposure over the full scene, the front objects are overexposed and the far wall is underexposed. The nature of this device, though, enables us to adaptively adjust the camera exposure according to depth. By increasing the exposure with depth, we can create a properly exposed image and a better depth map. We can do the same thing with laser power. And so this type of single shot depth adaptive imaging is impossible with LiDAR or other systems where you don't know the depth of the scene you are imaging. Since we are designing the light curtain specifically for certain depths, we can adaptively tune the system for better results. In fact, light curtains are so versatile that we can quickly set them up anywhere, even right here on this stage. Uh, Robert, my assistant here, uh, will help me demonstrate our light curtain device, if you'll give us one second. Uh, can you please turn down the lights? It's really dark. <laughs> can you turn some of the lights up? <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> That's better. Thank you. All right. So this here is a planar light curtain. This is like a normal light curtain found in elevators. Robert can put his hand into the curtain. He can move in and out and along the curtain, and it still detects him. Let's switch over to the other one. Okay. So here, uh, this is the lane monitoring curtain I showed before. It has two sides, a front and a back. Robert is going to act like a lost pedestrian here and wander through the curtain from side to side and then front to back. Or back to front. Or back to front. <laughs> and as he moves through the curtain, uh, it detects him just like it would a car or other object. So now we'll, we're imaging a cosine-shaped curtain. Uh, this curtain demonstrates the flexibility of the device uh, to create any ruled surface. As Robert walks along the curtain, it detects him easily. And for our final demonstration, we'll show the volumetric sampling curtain. This curtain is kind of like the laser beam seen in the movies. Uh, let's see if Robert can avoid detection. Oh, it sees you. Uh-oh. The alarms have now gone off and the police are coming for you, Robert. So in conclusion, uh, we've presented an alternative, albeit extremely simple way for obstacle detection that we all know about, triangulation. Light key curtains can be used as an effective object detector where you know the objects are likely to be in your environment. This is true in robotics, this is true in cars, and this is true in many other environments. So therefore, programmable light curtains will provide an effective, lightweight, light computation alternative to or in support of existing sensors today. Thank you. Uh, right, so we have time for a few questions. Uh, I'll just uh, kick off with a quick one. In the paper, uh, you mentioned the issue of having multiple such devices and the possibility of interfering with each other. And I know you're targeting cars, but what do you think you need to be able to uh, allow humans, walk, pedestrians walking through a crowd to have their own light curtains? Ah. Uh, interference is definitely a problem with this device right now. Um, you know, there's, you can take the traditional approaches that a lot of, like all sensors have this, all active sensors are going to have this problem. Um, some of the techniques people are exploring is like a coding of the, of the light way that you send out and then when you get it, you, you can decode it and make sure it's the same that you sent out. Um, we thought about other ways where um, you could ha use multiple lasers and so if you have like three lasers all pointing at the same point that the curtain is, that it's very unlikely that multiple, multiple people's three lasers are going to be pointing in the exact same spot and so you could use like a, a strength a signal of strength or a strength of signal uh, to, to kind of rule out the, the ones that aren't yours. So the strongest one's going to be yours, but the weaker ones won't be. Good. 
Okay, other questions? I have a question. I would like to know if you think that there could be any um, health hazards for if, uh, let's say, many people use this method <laughs> and pointed at me at the same time on the street. Right now, the lighters are not as popular. So, uh, what what do you think is your prediction if uh, 500 of those uh, curtains are pointed at me? Is there a problem? Uh, so, uh, eye safety issues is what you're referring to, I would say. Um, so this device is, is iSafe at about one to two meters right now. Uh, but when you have 500 of them pointing at your eye, I think, I mean, the, the, your eye still has to be able to focus all of that light into a, into a point. And um, when it's coming from 500 different directions, th that it's all hitting your eye is, is a little unlikely. Um, and I think you can make these things more eye safe by uh, using, you know, if, if we decided to use higher wavelength. Uh, I think that's all of active sensing. At some point, we need to have a breakthrough where, you, where we can use 1550 uh, nanometer light, and then the eye is, uh, it doesn't respond to it. It's not, it's not going to harm it in any way. OK, uh, I think we'll have to take further questions offline. I have some as well. Uh, so let's thank the speaker one more time. <laughs>